Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will continue working on the TRAC build series. In particular, uh, we will do uh, the bottom section of the grips. And for that, we are going to need uh, the 3D printed parts, as always. Uh, these are the three parts that we are going to need today, uh, since we are not going to do the top part in this episode. Um, these are not designed by me, these are uh, designed by a guy named Hannibal and I will leave uh, the link uh, to his Thingiverse in the description so you will need to go grab these files from his Thingiverse and uh, print them. He also provides in that uh, site the top section but you do not need to print those from him because um, he designed it for a different set of uh, switches and buttons I have designed my own I did a redesign of his version but to fit uh, the buttons and switches that we are going to use in particular so you only need to print these three pieces from his uh, his thingiverse um, you will need to print another copy but a mirrored one because he only provided one grip both are the same just mirror uh, a mirror option uh, version of each other so you will need to print one of these which this in particular is the uh, left hand this is the left hand grip you will need to print a mirror version for the right hand grip <clears throat> also something else that you will need are these spacers that these are in my Thingiverse because I don't know what kind of enclosure um, slash screen or whatever he used to attach these grips to. I just created a kind of a spacer slash adapter uh, to my enclosure and you will need to glue this uh, in here. So this will screw into my enclosure. And actually that's probably the first thing I'm going to be doing because uh, I want to set this to dry. So let's just grab a uh, super glue and super glue the spacer into the this this part of the grip. Right, so just add a few drops. You want this to be pretty tough because I've had cases where these are uh, separated, so make sure you put enough glue and you can use a toothpick or a barbecue skewer or whatever to align the holes uh, or just eyeball it. I just eyeball them. Uh, I let light through the holes here and then I align the holes by, uh, by eye. So I just eyeball it and that's, that's good enough. It doesn't need to be perfect. Yeah, so now I can see light coming out of all the holes that's probably good enough yeah so i'm gonna let this aside and let it dry and the next thing we want to do <clears throat> is mock up all the buttons and switches that we are going to need for the grip and place them in the uh the holes for them so all these holes uh, i've already done that for the right hand grip so let me show you also the trigger assembly. So you are going to need for each grip four 12 millimeter buttons. I have two different types just because I had a, I have a bunch of these. I don't like them so I like to just get rid of them and I use them for this section here that uh, you can see them anyway. They have a bigger profile. Uh, they are larger and, 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 and even thicker uh, but they are both 12 millimeters. If you don't have them, which you shouldn't. I, I would recommend these ones. They are a little bit smaller. I like them better, the push the, the, and everything. So just use all the same. Uh, I'm just using two different kinds because I want to get rid of these red ones that I have. I, I want to just use them. So yeah, you will see that we need two here in the bottom. We need one in the side. The trigger assembly, which just you know snaps into place. And then in the thumb section, this is the, the, gonna be controlled by the thumb, we have another 12 millimeter button and a three position flat um, stem uh, and momentary switch. So it goes back to center, like this one. 
Uh, I prefer the flat ones because they don't rotate. The round ones do rotate and if you put a cap, we will put a 3D printed cap later on, uh, it may rotate. So, I, But if you don't mind, <coughs> you can just use the, the round ones. I just prefer the flat ones. So yeah, we mock them up like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this uh, like so and solder one wire to each to one of the legs of each one of the buttons. One, one, uh, sorry, one uh, wire, yeah. And bear in mind two things. One, for the three uh, pin switch, this one here, it needs to be, the common one needs to be the center one. So it's gonna be, it's gonna come from this pin here. And second thing you have to bear in mind is in the trigger assembly, let me just pull it out. Uh, remember we used a limit switch we are not going to use the bottom one at all. You can even snip it off if you want, if it makes you feel safer that you're not gonna mess up. But uh, the common can be in any of the top two. So this one or this one. But the bottom one, we are going to, we are going to just ignore. We don't want that one, so don't do anything to that. But the common, the common wire can go in any of the other two. So. I'm not going to do that on camera. I will do it off camera and show you afterwards. So by the magic of YouTube. So here we are back. Uh, let me show you what I did, but essentially it's what I explained. So you can see I started here in the center pin. Then I went to the next button, one leg of each button, one leg of the uh, second stage trigger assembly, six by six button one leg of the, the, the middle leg in this case, but it doesn't matter middle or top, but I did the middle leg in this case and one leg in this last button. And I have left myself a little bit of wire, but not too much <clears throat> because I'm going to be mount. I mean, this is going to be attached to the shift register and uh, mine are like this one, very small. So I will mount this in here inside this uh, cavity. If you are going, if you are going to use one of those um, three-in-one that I talked about earlier in this video here, um, I don't know how big they are. I'm not sure if they would fit inside uh, there. So if you are going to use one of those, I would recommend you uh, you leave a little bit longer of a lead. Well, quite longer. Just calculate it to to get it outside of the grip is going to come this way and give you give yourself a little bit of slack in that wire because you're gonna have to mount probably you're gonna have to mount uh, those uh, ship registers outside of the grip but if you are using the smaller ones that I showed you or uh, if you are using um, port expanders those are very small those fit inside this enclosure and it's the best way to, to put it. So just give yourself a little bit of slack. It doesn't need to be that much. And that's all. So as you can see, every single button is now connected by a common wire. The next step is going to lead individual wires from each one of the rest of the, of the legs. So I'm going to do that again uh, off camera and be right back. And we're back. As you can see, I've soldered all the legs. I soldered wires to all the legs. You can see one wire for each one of the sides of the switch, of the rocker switch, one wire for each of the switches, one wire for the for each of the buttons in the trigger assembly, and this one here. At this point, you should have one common wire, which I soldered uh, in white, and then the rest of individual wires I soldered in blue. You do not need to know what button each wire belongs to. You just need to know which one is the common one. So if you solder uh, in one color only, just make sure you know which one is the common one. So in my case, the white one. Uh, what we are going to do now is actually close these two halves. So we are going to fit the wires 
through this gap here, this one here. Kind of like that. And this one's same. Let me show you. They go through this gap. Make sure you don't pinch them. There's a this uh, section there where it's going to be closing. Make sure you don't pinch the wires. Yeah, that's good. And then to close this, we are going to need one M45 by, uh, sorry, M4 by 45 millimeter screw. And obviously one M4 nut. So I'm going to place the screw first because it's a tight fit. Uh, sorry, the, the, the nut first. It's a tight fit. There you are. And the bolt is just long enough to reach it. If you don't do that first, you're not going to be able to screw the, the bolt. So now <clears throat> I can screw it in. And there it goes. It just grabbed. Perfect. And then we're going to need... Did I pinch it? No, I didn't. Okay. And then we're going to need one, two more screws. Uh, M3 in this case. One M3 by 16 millimeters there. And another one there. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, so now that I have all the screws in the bottom part, I'm going to attach the top part, which already has the adapter glued in and dry. Make sure all the wires go through this gap here. And make sure you don't pinch any of them. They all have to come out of this side. And then we can place this top section. Again, this is going to be using, well, actually not again. This is a M4 by 70 in this case, that is going to go in this top section here with another nut in the other side. And then we're gonna have a bunch of uh, M3, I think by 12s or by 16s as well. I think some of them, yeah, these two are 12, M3 by 12, these two. And then there's another one here. This is an M3 by uh, 16. So again, I'm going to do that off camera. So now that the grip, the bottom part of the grip is assembled, you should have uh, something like this. As I mentioned, there's one common wire and then eight uh, individual wires. That's because there's eight inputs <coughs> in this section of the grip. Up until this point, both grips, both sides uh, should be the same. So just do the same for the left one. And then uh, for the right grip, the right grip has 23 uh, digital inputs plus the joystick, which are, uh, is two, uh, two analog inputs, but that goes in a separate uh, circuit. Uh, but digital inputs, it has 23 the left one has 32. What that means is that the right grip needs um, three eight registers like these ones. Uh, and the right grip, uh, sorry, the left grip needs four of them. And they all fit inside this cavity. This is a big cavity and these are very small if you're using something like this one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is for now, and since this is going to be the last step of uh, today's video, uh, I'm going to solder the first uh, SIP register to the grip. And since this is the right grip and it, on it only needs three of them, one single register will cover the eight, um, the eight wires that uh, this one has. And then when we are going to do the top one, which needs... Uh, 15 more inputs, uh, therefore I will need uh, 
almost two full uh, shift registers like this one. And by the way, you can see I've soldered them together. As I mentioned, shift registers go uh, in series. So there's an in and an out. So I connected uh, this uh, shift register from the out section to the in section of the next one. So I can use now 16 inputs uh, in this. And what I'll be doing is I'll solder this single one here and then in the next video we are going to be doing the the headers or the hats or whatever you want top section whatever you want to call this and we will be soldering this piece um in here and after that we will connect these two via wires from the in of one of them to the out of the other and then we will uh, also take uh, leads out of the grid, but we will we will see that in detail. What I want uh, in, in that video, I mean, uh, what I want to, to explain to you is that since we are going to only need three in the right one, I'm just gonna solder one single in this one, and then I'll connect uh, the two that we will solder to the hat section in the next video. However, for the right one, we are going to need four shift registers. So what I'll do is, even though there's going to be only eight wires from the left, left, left hand grip as well, I'll be soldering one of these, right? Uh, so there will be one fully occupied by the eight, um, eight uh, wires, and there's going to be one available for the next video where I'll be soldering. I'll be soldering to the left hat uh, one of these as well, but there will still be uh, eight leads that need to be connected and those will be connected to the bottom section. But we will see that in more detail in the next video. In the meantime, and again off camera, I'm going to connect uh, this shift register to uh, this grip. Remember shift registers, uh, like the uh, switches you need to connect to the input pins, one side, which is going to be all these blue wires, and the other one is the common one, the common uh, pin. Uh, <coughs> in my case, for my, this is um, uh, my own design that I, I did my own PCB, but uh, in my case, uh, it has a couple of uh, pins, extra pins here in this side, which are actually uh, ground because my design is a pull-up uh, shift register. That means that by default, every single pin, which are these four here and these four in the middle, uh, are um, pulled up and by default they are uh, a one. When you press the button, it pulls down to ground. So what I'll do is connect the common wire to one of these pads here, which is a ground. And you could also even use the one of the grounds on, on the top and bottom. But since I'm going to be using those for connecting the other shift registers, I'll just, I'll just use the pads dedicated for that. So one common to whatever is the common in the board you're using and the rest of them in the digital inputs. So let me do that and I'll be back. So that's it. This is how it looks like. As I mentioned, the common wire to a common pad, which in my case is, is a ground pad, and then each single wire is connected to the eight uh, digital inputs of the shift registers. These pads in the top and bottom are the ones that are going to be connecting, connected to the other shift registers. And at the last one, the last shift register out pins, which are these ones, are the ones that are going to go out the grip and inside the enclosure. So thank you for thank you very much for joining. If you have any comments or questions, uh, do not hesitate uh, to post them in the comments. I am gladly helping whoever needs help. And stay tuned for the next one in which, as I mentioned, we will be finishing the grips by completing the hat sections with all the switches and the shift registers. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.